Hello, and today we're going to talk about why you should be working with estate agents. Hello, my name is Mark Fitzgerald and welcome to the Property Unleashed channel. It's great to have you joining me here today. So if you're a deal sourcer or you're just getting into property, you need to be working with estate agents. A lot of people like to go out there, find deals for themselves, and that's great, but it can be very time consuming and it can also cost you a lot of money as well. If you can get in there and start working with some really good estate agents, you can fast track your property investing journey. Now, as I say, that could be deal sourcing, that could be doing strategies like rent to rent, serviced accommodation, buy, refurbish, refinance, whatever it is you want to be doing, this will help you to speed up the results on that. And if you need any help with your property investing as well, please be sure to visit thepropertyunleashed.com where we have free tools and resources and training available to you on that site all free of charge. Why? Because what goes around comes around and we want to help you on your journey. There's a lot of information out there and it can get very confusing. So why not have it all laid out for you and make it nice and easy. We also offer one-to-one -one coaching as well. If that will help you supercharge and speed your business forward. But let's get on with this episode right now. So one of the obvious things about working with estate agents is they've got loads of deals. You know, they have the market share of the deals in the area that you're looking. So if you are looking for specific properties and you want to start getting in with agents, you need to be talking to them, you need to be communicating with them, and you need to be building up the know, like, and trust with any agents that are out there. And this can take a bit of time. Don't be one of these new sort of investors that marches in there and says, you know, I'm going to buy X amount of properties and I've got loads of investors and what have you got for me? And then can't follow through. You want to take your time. You really want to get in there and, and show them some respect. Let them start selling to you like they are. They are salespeople at the end of the day. Let them tell you what they've got go through the motions with them. A lot of the times you'll know more than the estate agents and things, and that's fine. Don't contradict them. Just listen to what they have to say. They want to sell properties. You want to get creative potentially, and you want to take properties on. And as I say, if you're a deal sourcer, it's brilliant. You know, if you've, you've spoken to a few investors, and I've done a video on this before, on how you should approach investors when you're setting up your deal sourcing company and bringing in, obviously, investors to be able to buy the deals once you find them, you've got to set criteria which you should have you can go in there and start looking for and talking about properties of that criteria why because once you actually find these deals with said letting agent or with said estate agent you'll be able to take these deals straight to your investors potentially they might be off market as well and you'll be able to get these deals over the line you can make sure that the estate agent gets their commission everyone's happy and it's a win-win for all parties Equally, getting in with good estate agents that have been around a while will have some fantastic knowledge of the area. You see, when you're deal sourcing or when you're just looking for property deals, we just see a deal on Rightmove, Zoopla, you know, whatever we're looking at, or even on the estate agents' websites. We don't exactly know the ins and outs of it all. We don't know what the problem is with the vendor who's selling the property or the landlord. We don't know the ins and outs, whereas estate agents will because, of course, they'll find out. They'll ask questions. They'll have a chat with these people. So by going in and speaking to the estate agents first and saying, I've seen this property. I see that it's a bit like this or it's a bit like that or a bit run down or a bit overpriced. Can you tell me what the problem is? They'll probably know, which gives you a head start when you actually go to your negotiations. Well, they're just looking for a quick sale, are they? Would they take this amount of money or are they definitely locked in to sell it at this top whack? Well, they're going to try and take, of course, as much as possible and that's what we're here for. But if you're seeing properties that have been on the market a while and you say, Do you know, if, they, if they're willing to drop a bit in that price, I could probably get this sold for them with the connections that I have. You're going to start getting traction. They're going to start bringing your deals. You can start asking them the question, what else have you got that's been a bit sticky on the market? Let's see if we can help you. Let's see if we can work together. So the local knowledge is a massive, massive factor. And it's local knowledge, obviously, of the area, which you may have yourself, but it's also that knowledge of the owner, the vendor, the landlord, of knowing specifically, to a point, 
why they're selling it, what's the matter with it, what problems they may have with it, has it fallen through before, having that sort of knowledge. And as I say in nearly every video, we need to find out what the pain point is. Whether you're doing rent to rent deals, whether you're doing service accommodation deals, whether you're deal sourcing, whether you just wanna buy the properties, you wanna know what the problem is and how you can solve that problem. And if it's just a straight out buy, that's fair enough. But if you know the problem and you can actually help somebody with the problem, it's not always about money. And it's not always about how much they can get. If they know that they can sleep well at night, you've solved the problem, it's a fair price or it's a fair deal, happy days. As I say, a win-win for everybody. So once you can get in there with estate agents, and to be fair, you probably only need one or two estate agents on your books calling you with deals to be able to build a flourishing massive property business that really works for you. You don't need loads and loads of estate agents to be working with. So you can really get out there and speak to all the estate agents in your area and then realistically you know probably one or two, I mean even one will do, but even one or two will want to start working with you as long as you can do what you say you can do. So make sure that you're not going in there and wasting people's time. Now sometimes something might happen and maybe a deal doesn't happen or go through but make sure if that is the case you're straight in there or you're straight on the phone to whoever it is you're dealing with and explain the circumstances and what's happened because they see deals fall over all the time so as long as you're upfront about it and you go and explain exactly what's happened you should be okay if you keep having that and at time after time after time you're letting them down hey you're going to blow that trust out the window and of course then you're going to struggle but in the beginning just be clear be precise be transparent with what you're doing and what you're saying and make sure that if there is a problem, you talk to them about it. Because sometimes, you know, if, if maybe they can't get a mortgage on that property or, or something just happens, if you explain it, the vendors might actually say, well, hang on a minute, we're happy to wait. And you can get creative in the deals that you're doing. Which leads me on to the next one, which is if you're working with estate agents, you build up that know, like, and trust, it's a lot easier to get creative strategies like purchase lease options, rent to rent deals, over the line because you built up the trust with them. You make sure that they know they're gonna get their fee. So if you're not gonna buy it right here, right now, maybe you're gonna take it on as a lease option, a purchase lease option, which is where you get the property now, but you buy it in three to five years or seven years time. But you lock the price in now, you give the landlord, the vendor, a guaranteed rent over that time and you take on the property as if it's your own. Of course, estate agents hate that because they're thinking, I'm not gonna get paid now for what, seven years you're having a laugh. No, 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 no. You've gotta make sure that they know their fee will be paid, whether it's you paying it, an investor paying it, a joint venture partner paying it, or you're gonna pay it out of your profits, but you make sure that they get paid as quickly as possible. And if you can do that, they're gonna love you for life and they're always gonna to wanna to sort of work with you as well. So make sure that they get paid also check out their fees to so make sure that you're not getting you know done over with a massive massive fee that you can't pay of course if you do buy a property you don't have to worry about their fee their, their landlords or vendors will be paying their fees but again making sure that it's a win-win for all parties is very very important and of course if they're on board with you as well they'll almost help you with the negotiations of the deal so if you do want to get creative and you want to explain something if you're getting on really well with the estate agent they know they're going to get their fees and you put break it down in such a manner that it's simple easy terminology you know a lot of us learn all of this we read the books we listen to the podcasts we watch the youtube episodes and then we we go out there and start using all this different terminology Estate agents, uh, a lot of landlords, particularly vendors and just homeowners, aren't going to understand the terminology, PLO, uh, rent, R to R, and all of that sort of thing. You're obviously educating yourself by going through these uh, videos and actually learning these things. But you've got to be careful that you don't start doing all of that uh, to estate agents. Keep it stupid simple. I always say keep it stupid simple, as simple as you can possibly keep it, and it's in easy terms to manage and muster. So you don't go in there and say, we're going to do a lease option, we're going to purchase lease option. Yeah, just tell them, tell them we'll do one of those. You want to go in there and just say, listen, at the moment, the market's not quite right to buy the property, but we could take the property off their hands. We can give them a guaranteed rent so that it covers their mortgage, it covers all their costs, and they walk away with some money. Uh, and let's lock the price in. So right now, we can't, we can't get a mortgage at this rate because interest rates or for whatever reason, but maybe in three to five years' time, we could lock in an agreement of the price now 
uh, and we'll buy it off them whether it's us that buys it or an investor that buys it we are going to buy it we are going to lock that price and we've got the option to do so uh, so you can do things like that as well of course if you're deal sourcing you want to be doing purchase options without the lease to obviously hold those deals to you now that's normally done more when it's just you straight to vendor rather than with a estate agents or um, anything like that but of course you can do that as well and it's just really just saying that i've got the purchase option to buy this house at this price and then you can sell or sign that option over to your investor so that they can then buy it and it's locked into an agreement to say yep only you can buy it but you want to make sure that if you do that you make it assignable to anybody so you can make it assignable to anybody don't just lock yourself into it or you'll have to buy it you get me if you make it assignable then you can assign it to the other party uh, and that's one way as a deal sorter to lock in deals to make sure that nobody comes and bamboozles you and takes the deal away from you but of course deal sourcer really wants to be working with the local agents getting them on board or local agents for the areas that they're looking so if you're a deal sourcer and you want to be national you want to be going and making friends with all of these agents and that will be work that will be time but it will be work and time so well spent in the long run when they're bringing you all these deals and you're working on your investors and you're selling and packaging on these deals okay and as I say it's just so so important to make sure that you build up the trust with the agents before you start trying to get creative with different strategies and things like that you need to make sure that when you're talking to them they understand and they trust you and they know that you'll follow through with certainty in what you're doing and you're not going to do that in one or two meetings so you're going to have to get out there and talk to a few different agents a few different times so once you're in with the agents the beauty of that is you can get off market deals you know they, they'll, they'll know your criterias because you'll have spoke this out you'll have spoken to them so much about it that you'll have your set criterias that you're looking for and then as soon as they go and see a, a vendor's property or a landlord's property and they think to themselves do you know what i know mark this is exactly what mark's looking for i'll give him a shout and they'll give you a shout when they've walked out of the property would you like to look at this mark what where is it yeah what does it hit hits yep i'm on my way are you there now can i come and have a look straight away or, or do we need to book something in so you can go and get off market deals there's no competition no competition whatsoever when you're doing that you go in there and say yep we can offer this will they accept this yep they'll accept that right i know for a fact now because i know the criteria from my investors that i'll be able to sell this deal on quite quickly so we can move quite fast here let's lock this in now let's get it so that it doesn't even hit the market happy days and then you follow through and what you say you're going to do it's a winner winner chicken dinner and also you make sure that of course when you're doing stuff like this you do follow through you do what you say you're going to do and again like i said before keep it transparent if you've got a problem if you can't do it get in there straight away don't hide behind anything be upfront and honest with them and still try and help the situation still try and help the sale if you can um, but obviously things do happen in life but let's try and make sure that we do what we say we're going to do and of course if you're looking at getting creative with those deals maybe you did have an investor lined up they pulled out let you down you're thinking to yourself we could make this a lease option we could potentially make it into a rent to rent or something while we look for another buyer so maybe lock in a rent to rent deal for a couple of years and then we can look for another buyer and see where the landlord wants to take it then if you are going to get creative and the agents on board they know they're going to get paid they also know that you're going to do what you say you're going to do what you will also find is that they'll actually back you up and they may potentially even sway the the homeowner the landlord in your favor so you know where you might struggle to try and get that person on board because you've just met them there's no trust there or anything like that if they know the agent this is the agent that they're paying to get rid of their property or sell their property at the end of the day you know and, and this can go actually even if it's on price so let's just say for argument's sake you put a price in you think it'll work at this level somebody's going to go in there they're going to convert it they're going to make it into an hmo they're going to they're going to add loft conversion you know there's value to be had here at this price anyway somebody comes in with a bit of a higher price you're really getting on well with the agent the agent knows you're not in a chain you're going to go in there you're going to have speed and certainty in what you're doing they will probably say you've got this higher bid but they're in a chain be careful if you go for this one that's slightly lower i can tell you for a fact the deal will happen 
your property will be sold. It won't be going back on the market because these guys don't mess about. They've already got a plan. They know what they want to do. Happy days. And of course, that can get you a deal and can get you a cheaper deal than potentially if it was you just out there trying to do it yourself. So I hope you can see why working with estate agents is so, so vital and important to be your property investing toolbox, so to speak. Um, you can say, well, it's pretty obvious at the end of the day, Mark, you know, we all want to be working with estate agents, but not everybody knows how to get in there and start working with estate agents. Remember, it's going to take time. Uh, you've got to build up and know, like, and trust, so to speak, with them. Go in there, start talking about properties, look on their website, see what properties they've got for sale, what could potentially work for you guys. Go in there and start talking about it. Leave your business cards or let them get used to you popping in there, you know, maybe every week, every couple of weeks just talking about potential deals they've got there, building up the know, like, and trust, doing some viewings, seeing what, you're not, what you need. If you're deal sourcing, it gives you a chance, particularly if you're starting out, to go out there and get some investors' details, get some people on board, get some criteria of what you're looking for, and then go into those estate agents with the criteria that you need, or potentially already the homework done. You've already looked on their website, or you've looked on the portals, you've seen the properties you, you know will work. You just need to get that deal done. You need to get that uh, balance right. You need to get that price right. And then once you can do that a couple of times, and you've done a couple of deals, and they've got paid, you've got paid, investors are happy, you will be well on your way to being the property investor that you wanna be. And of course, if you're not deal sourcing, this is still, very important to do because you will save yourself money in the long run. So if you need any help with this, please feel free to reach out to us. Leave a, uh, leave a question in the comments below. Um, like it, share this if you think somebody could use it. Check out the propertyunleashed.com website for free tools and resources in property investing. As I say, we help property people get the most out of their property businesses and we can offer coaching and mentoring if that's anything that you're interested in as well. Hope you've enjoyed this episode and I look forward to you joining me on the next episode. Bye for now.